my name is Gary Weber, and uh, I served in the Sea Org back in 1970. It was nine through 84, something around in that era. It's been a long time, uh, but um, it's time for me to tell my story. And I was in the Guardian's office back in that period of time. Served in, um, in public relations most of the time there. So you worked at Flag Land Base? It was the Flag Land Base, yes. Hello, and welcome to Flag. When did you first hear the name David Miscavige? I was in PR. We got a phone call, and it said, there is this crazy guy that is holding an iron up to a girl's face and about to burn her face off. Could you send someone? It was a distress call. This was at, at Flag Land Base? That's when I was in the Guardian's office in the PR. So Milt and Laura Wolf were there. It said, Gary, could you go down there? So I went down there. And um, there's this guy, he's got an iron to her face and says, um, it, it, the girl was screaming and said, the guy's going to burn me, the guy's going to burn me. And I said, hey, dude, and he was my size, you know, and he was a young guy like me back in the day. And uh, he says, uh, I says, do you know who I am? He says to me, and I says, no, I don't. I know you're a guy that's got an iron to this girl's face and you're going to take it off. And he says, I'm David, and I heard Miss Savage. And I didn't get miscavaged. And I said, you, you, you're taking that um, iron away from the girl's face, you know? And then I said, well, what'd she do to you anyway? He said, well, he didn't, she didn't iron it properly. His shirt. His shirt. And I went, wow. So that's one of the things that kind of went bump in the night too, because he was a CMO. He, goes, he says, I'm the CMO. So we put it down, the girl, and they were too afraid to call the police because it, it would be a PR flap, basically. So I went back and I talked to Milton Laura Wolf, and they said, uh, oh, that, I said, David Miscavige. And uh, I said, no, that's Miscavige. And, um, and the, so that went bump in the night to me because he was a, an executive and uh, I knew you couldn't do that to people. And so that was a, another bump. And, and, um, and I saw his name again. And... Now this was in regard to finances, and um, and it worried me that he was on it. Um, we were opening up bank accounts in uh, foreign countries, and it was his name and um, Pat and Annie Broker. And I was remember asking, um, you know, people around me in, in, the, in the bureau. I said, "How come?" Oh, I said, "Who are these people?" And uh, oh, David Miscavige. He goes, "That's uh, that guy's gonna have." Oh wow, interesting. Okay, good for him. But then who's Pat and Annie Bro broke off or broker? And um, Phil knew who they were, and they said that they weren't Sea Org members. And I go, well, why is it Hubbard's name on this? And why is there non-Sea Org members in it? So um, he said, you don't need to know. So, okay. But that was odd to me. So you're asking me, where are the things that were leading up to um, um, things that... Uh, caused me to want to leave or caused me to want to disassociate from the organization. Question on the bank accounts in the name of David Miscavige and Pat Nanny Broker. How much money went into those bank accounts? I don't know. It was just setting up the accounts. So and I, we had nothing to do with money. Do you know what country they were in? Do you recall? I remember one of them was Liechtenstein. Tell me about forced abortions at Flag Land Base. Okay. Well, it, there was an order that came out that said that no more babies at uh, Flag or the Sea Org. This is a rough story for me to tell. But, um, so anyway, what it was, I remember getting a list of all the executives that were um, pregnant. And I had, they, Ethics were working with them, but I was organizing the um, uh, motor pool. 
Oh yeah, the reason it, it got to be such a big deal in the Guardian's office because there were so many abortions that were being done, they would be done at the Clearwater Free Clinic. Of course, they were sent to the free clinic to get done. There were so many, so the Guardian's office had to get them to different locations so it wouldn't look like the church is having all these abortions. So we got with Motor Pool, and Motor Pool would go to like St. Pete Free Clinic, you know, and get their abortions. And it was a big van of executives, and the list would come in. I mean, it's, it's horrifying now to even think about what I did back then. But what year was this when they ordered no more babies in Sea Org? It was 82, I think it was. I think it was 1982. I'm, I'm not sure. It's so long ago. How many women do you think you drove to get abortions? I didn't do the driving, no. but I organized all the vans that went to different places. You know, St. Petersburg, um, the free clinics, and then uh, Dave Ravel was the uh, the guy at Motor Pool that was, uh, um, he would be the one that would be the driving and setting it up and things like that. But basically the Guardian office was more concerned with the press rather than making sure that the abortions were being done. That was being done by ethics. Now what happened to me, which kind of uh, was a personal story, is my wife gets pregnant at this point in time. So this is what awaits you at FLAG, your personal immortality. Never in the history of Scientology have so many moved into the OT band. Of all the adventures on the whole track, none compare to the ultimate prize of spiritual freedom you'll find at the top of the grade chart. And it's here for you right now. Come to FLAG so we can take you to OT.